Hello, Tom Lavecki here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. I probably get um, the, the most questions, question, the most frequent question I get uh, in regards to podcasting, and it's not, um, can you please stop? <laughs> That's more of a statement, just kidding. Um, but it's, you know, hey, Tom, you started a podcast, I was kind of thinking about it. Um, how do you start a podcast? So I, we have the dubious pleasure of having and, 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 and the honor of having uh, Dave Newmark, who was on the podcast before, uh, and he launched podsearch.com, which I call kind of the Google of podcasts. Uh, but he's starting a new initiative called startupod.com. And um, we're going to be rolling out an, a sister podcast for our sister magazine, uh, Digest Magazine. Check it out at the digestonline.com. Uh, Dave Newmark, welcome to New Theory Podcast. Uh, how are you doing today? Doing great, Tom. Thank you so much for having me on again. It's really a pleasure. Now, let's start off with why start a podcast? You know, um, obviously, if you're just listening to this, they obviously have an interest in the medium and hopefully an interest in New Theory Podcast. But why start a podcast? You know, uh, if a person uh, wants something to has something to say and they want to say it, you uh, know, in, in a format that is, uh, you know, programmed uh, with, uh, let's say, interviews or going deep on a topic that they're passionate about, uh, and they want to have a regular feed to people that they uh, know and care about, uh, or even don't know, but they they think would be interested in the topic, then uh, that's the reason to do it. Love it. Now, now, um, give some stats or give some, 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 shed some light. Cause when I started my podcast, obviously a slow grow, it was, I think it was like 300 per podcast, um, which I was like, Oh my God, this is super slow. Um, and then I started getting decent numbers. You know, we, we get probably all in across all mediums, 10 to t- 10 to 12,000 downloads a month. And I was kind of like one time with somebody who wasn't yourself, but of somebody else. And I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of doing 10 to 12,000 a month. I know it's nothing. And like, you know, I was like kind of like down on myself and like, are you nuts? Like 10,000 downloads a month is like the top 3% of all podcasts out there or top 1% ever was. My point being is like, you're going to reach an audience of X amount and let's say it's 300, 500, whatever. That's a lot in the podcasting world. So with that being said, it gave me more confidence say, holy shit, I'm doing something right. So walk us through like, you know, like, hey, the barriers to entry are not only pretty low, lower than you think, but like listenership, you don't have to kill it to be successful. So maybe share some stats or thoughts on that, Dave. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to, to do that. I think it starts, Tom, with understanding what is the motivation. You know, um, I meet so many podcasters who uh, are, are doing their show for so many different reasons. And um, uh, let me just take the broadest stroke uh, to it, which is, uh, let's say, passion versus money. You know, uh, and not, not to say that a person can't be passionate and also want to make money on it, but um, there's a number of people who do a podcast just because they want to have their voice heard. And that could be uh, because they've got a business like yours where you want to uh, be across multiple media and, and get the word out and build your brand. Uh, but it might just be because you are passionate about something like poetry or something. You want to do a daily poetry reading. And, and you know that there are people who want to listen to it. And, and good for you. You know, it, it's, uh, it's not restricted. It's not like when you, uh, in the old days, when you would try to go to a radio station and say, hey, I've got an idea for a show. Do you want to hire me? You know, it, if you want to do it, you just do it. Uh, so I would say that uh, for people who have a passion to say something and step up and speak out, then that's, that's what they should do. Um, the other thing is um, for, for money, um, it's actually really interesting that you bring that up about starting out with 300 and then, and then making your way to the you know, 10,000 level and above. Um, you know, it's really, uh, it's, it's about who you approach uh, to be a sponsor if you're going to be doing that. Of course, there are donation models and support models out there, but advertising is, is by far the most prevalent way to get an ad, uh, a, a show supported. And I'll tell you that um, advertisers are really looking for uh, programming that fits their niche. So if you are uh, a person who has a business, maybe it's a local business. Uh, so let's start with that, for example. Let's say that you are in a city and you um, 
you know, you have people that you know from your church or from your uh, clubs that you're part of or, you know, high school friends or whatever it is, you've got a, a social circle and you start with that and you spread the word uh, to that group and then you start your show and you might have, you know, 100, 200, 300, 500 listeners in the beginning. Um, believe it or not, sponsors who are local will love that and they will love the fact that you can do a spot, you can do a, uh, an ad for them to those local listeners. And um, if you, let's say that you've got, uh, you know, uh, a certain amount of listeners and then your, your cost per thousand is, you know, 20, 30, $40. Uh, so you're not going to be making much at a small uh, number of thousands, uh, but it'll grow. And, um, and then you can uh, see what the market will bear. Uh, you know, I, I spoke with a couple of uh, women who were from New York City who, um, you know, sort of like to talk about, you um, what was going on in the gossip pages of, of New York Post or whatever. And they're just, you know, yapping about this person and that person on the Upper East Side. And it's very, uh, a very chatty type show. And they were telling me that they're killing it with jewelry stores uh, in the neighborhood and, and art galleries and all kinds of things. So they just walked in and said, hey, I've got a podcast and I'm talking to these well-heeled other women in the Upper East Side of New York City. And, and how about it? You know, and, and, they got yes, yes, and yes in terms of being uh, getting sponsors. So they're actually uh, making full time livings uh, doing their little podcast. Now I doubt that they have, uh, you know, more than a couple thousand listeners. I, I didn't ask them what their count was, but I don't think it's that much. The point is that um, if you're a sponsor and you find someone to, you know, be an influencer like that, it can be uh, really, really profitable. And, and, and that's a great point. So the cool thing about podcasting is, and, and I had a really cool found a CEO on yesterday, Capasa.com, check it out, C-U-P-P-A-S-A.com. And, and it's an app that uh, basically if you want to work out of a coffee shop, you can, um, you can you know, download it and, and reserve space. I don't know, we work for coffee shops. And, 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 but it's super, it's super focused in on Hoboken, New Jersey. Even though, like, I'm a national, international podcast, it made sense for me to do because, you know, one is it's a concept that can grow. So people are like, oh, wow, it's a pretty cool idea starting out of Hoboken. And number two, when I go to, like, do paid ads to boost it or go on pod search to optimize it, I'll hit local people that are targeted. And if I want to go national, it's already there because it's on the iPhone. Right. So the cool thing about it is the scalability is inherently built in. Um, you know, you optimize it, you know, um, and you kind of get it out there. So, okay. So, so I, you know, we, now we get the benefits of the podcast. It makes sense. Um, I think, and you know, this, you know, podcasting is, you know, so could, could be surprisingly, you can make some money on it. again, you know, local jewelry store for the, the ladies that, you know, talk about the latest tea and some good local advertising. But I also think bigger picture in terms of, and you probably agree, Dave, is it could be an extension of your marketing efforts, you know? Rather than like, if I'm a digital marketing firm, rather than always try to like, you know, ask for business, ask for business, reach out to a thought leader that's local and be like, hey, you know, let's talk about digital marketing for museums, you know? And, mm -hmm. and then from there, you have that person on and you're not asking them for anything and they talk about, you know, what they want to talk about. And worst case scenario, you built a relationship that could be a potential client, but then also use that content to build your own brand. So is that kind of part of your thought too, is as an extension of your marketing efforts? Yes, it, it would be. I think that it's, um, every person has to uh, reach uh, an answer to the cost benefit analysis of it because um, putting together a podcast and arranging for interviews, uh, you know, and, and editing and recording and all that, it takes some time. Sure. Uh, so it may be that it's not worth it, but it may be that it is. And I, I think the, the only thing um, to, to keep in mind uh, is, is that if you're just going through the motions and sort of phoning it in with standard questions, um, you know, like asking this, the very same questions uh, to all people just in order to get through it kind of thing, it's not going to grow. It's not really going to be worth it. So if you... Uh, have the passion and the energy and the time to to kind of get it rolling with really quality content, then it would be uh, worth sticking with and uh, giving it a try and then watching the numbers to make sure that you're uh, growing, even if it's slow growth. That's the idea. I, I, I agree. And and like, for example, for me, I'm like, New Theory Podcast is very raw. We do live to tape, very little editing. Um, we have improved our quality. I have my one of four rescue cats in the back. Uh, 
<laughs> in the litter box as we speak. But that's kind of our, our gym, you know. Um, the whole idea of New Theory is to just literally chat with serious people about serious topics, not meaning serious boring, but like crap that matters, you know, and, 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 and you're right. Like, so I want to, I want to kind of put, put what we did so far in an envelope that I want to talk about execution. So one, you gotta, it gotta have passion about it. Cause you gotta like doing it because it, right. it is time first money proposition. I don't think the financial barriers are as high. However, you're right. The time you got to coordinate guests and so forth. Um, number two is, um, you know, again, whether you just do something you love and, the, you know, and, 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 and the business follows, uh, you just do it because you love it to get away from the wife, just kidding. Um, or, you know, uh, or you just um, uh, want to use an extension of your business. Like there's a whole host of, of reasons to do it. And before we jump in on the execution and how, one of the things, Dave, and you, again, you could probably echo this before we jump in on how to start a podcast is I would, you know, email like a billionaire. It was Jeff Hoffman. He's one of the founders of Priceline. Um, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, VaynerMedia, uh, Perez Hilton. Um, I had a whole bunch of pretty cool people on just like you um, that if I were to reach out to these people in any other fashion, they would tell me to go kick rocks. But like, I'm like fairly friendly with some super serious people now, super pro high profile people in lieu of the podcast. And, you know, my numbers weren't big and I told them my numbers weren't big and they were okay with it. You know, they're like, you know, and, and I and I actually asked like Chris Hilton and a few other bigger players that I had on separately after the poll. I'm like, dude, I'm like at like 500 downloads while you're on. He's like, I'm going to um, get heard by people that probably normally won't hear me. And that's what's important to me right now. And that was like resonated, whether you were a billionaire or whether you're a local coffee shop as to why I've been doing it. So one of my biggest takeaways is people like don't say no generally to podcasts. And I got some pretty badass people on as a result. So give us like kind of your thoughts on that before we get into how to launch a podcast. All right. Well, um, this is, um, you know, you, you've brought up some really great points and some really great questions. Let me just address uh, the, the, the main one that you've addressed, which has to do with um, being fearful to talk to people that you think are too big for you. So if you're just starting out, uh, you know, you're, you're thinking, uh, you're kind of self-sabotaging. Yeah. Um, I think that you, you've really identified a, a major uh, point there, which is um, that, uh, you know, you, you just say, oh, they're, you know, it's not going to work. They're not going to do it. You know, I, I liken that, Tom, to um, creative writing and uh, writer's block. So if, I don't know if you've had this situation and maybe some of your listeners have where you've got an assignment and you, uh, you have to write something. Maybe it's a report or maybe it's an email or whatever. And you're thinking, how am I going to start this? And you, you kind of think, oh, no, I can't start it that way. Oh, no, I can't really start it that way. No, that's not going to work. And you start to self-sabotage before you even type the first letter. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I, I learned long ago, actually in college, uh, to just uh, start. You know, you, you, um, you start typing, and actually it's called the timed writing. It's, it's a trick uh, that, that I learned, which is that you just start typing, even if you start typing the words, I don't know what to write. And, um, and then all of a sudden the ideas start to flow and then things start to come out. Maybe bad ideas come out first and that's okay. And then you just erase it and then you, you, you get going. I think um, getting guests for a podcast is the same kind of thing where um, just go for it. Um, even if you blow it, even if they say no, uh, or they say, maybe they'll say no, not right now, but maybe down the road. So, um, you know, it, it really is important just to start, uh, just to get going and, uh, and that would be that would be the idea. But um, the second part of it is having an, a little bit of an infrastructure in terms of how to schedule it and 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 getting you know your microphones in place and having all that kind of stuff. Well, okay, so yeah, let's get into the how because um, and you were on his podcast, uh, Jeremy Ryan Slate, uh, who has Create Your Own Life podcast. He he has great numbers. Check it out. There's over fifty thousand a month and. Um, and uh, he's the one who he turned me on the podcast. And what happened was I started a podcast. I had him on. Um, it turns out he's from New Jersey. So, you know, I was super small at the time. And then we kind of met up. We befriended. And um, I was on his show and I got some great results. I know you've been on the show. My point being is he's, he's what I call a podcast purist. He walked me through what mics to get. You know, I'm using Zoom now. Um, literally kind of held my hand. But a lot of it was trial and error outside of what he showed me. And I wish I had startuppod.com. So let's get into maybe the first 
one, two, and three steps to, hey, hey, Dave, we're starting a podcast. Uh, how can Start a Pod help me? And what are the first maybe one, two, or three steps to get going? Yeah. So um, thank you very much for that, um, that handoff, because <laughs> I really am looking forward to talking about it. Um, I think what's, you know, when you and I first uh, uh, talked on, on your original podcast back in February about pod search, um, it was really uh, to talk about one of, you know, my, my big passion is podcasting. And so um, I really start, I started podsearch.com because I wanted to um, help unlock the power of, of podcast listening uh, for people who were looking for content. And so I came up with a, a, a kind of a category based, uh, you know, directory. And, and then uh, with the advertising, uh, you know, we've been doing that uh, as a company for a dozen years and we, we place millions and millions of dollars of um, ads on podcasts uh, for companies large and small. Uh, so what I wanted to do was to be able to uh, fund, uh, you know, as many podcasts as we could uh, that would make sense for our clients. And um, I was hearing more and more uh, just what you were saying, which is that people were coming up to you and saying, how do I start a podcast? And you were asking uh, Jeremy about, you know, how do I start a podcast? So uh, this question was coming up more and more and more. So I thought, well, you know what? I actually know how to do that. And so um, I did the research to come up with um, learning management system software and applied um, some team members to the task of putting this together. And then we, um, we hired a video producer and we set up a set and we ended up coming up with um, courses that would essentially teach the basics of how to start a podcast. The difference was that um, when, I, when I was coming up with this idea and, and trying to put it together, um, what I wanted to do was to <clears throat> put advertising at the heart of it because um, there are lots of great courses uh, that you know you can pay hundreds of dollars for. There's also a lot of free uh, courses that are on YouTube and so forth, but none of them have the advertising built in. So we have the uh, a direct path to uh, advertisers, and it's it's not that we guarantee the advertising revenue because you know we don't know which advertisers are going to pick which shows, but um, you'll get closer with us than with any other learning management system platform. This, so that's, the, that's at the heart of it is the advertising support. The second is I wanted to um, make sure that we provided these people who start with Startapod or, or get going with Startapod uh, with all of the connections that they need. So for example, we have a um, connection with Simplecast, uh, which is a hosting company and a very special um, interface whereby we get their, uh, with permission of the podcaster, we get the download numbers automatically. So that will enable us to make the buys much more easily because we know what the thousands are. We can watch it grow and we can figure out the, the, the ad rate, essentially. Yeah, because that, that's the other challenge too, right? Because whether you do a CPM model or a flat buy, um, it's tough to nail down what the actual listenership is. So, okay, so Starter Pod will help me. I saw on there and I started thumbing around, you know, some of the legal considerations, some of the branding considerations. Hey, um, what, uh, what tool can I use? You know? So there's, right. there's a pretty good um, uh, way to go through this at your own pace, which is nice. Um, and it's not expensive. So give us your pricing model. I, I saw it's kind of a SaaS model, which I like because I've seen some pretty expensive programs right. go into the thousands. So walk us through, your pricing strategy and what, what will it cost us? Yeah, $9.99 uh, a month. And there's no contract. So you can do it for a month and then quit. No problem. Um, we're hoping that um, people, uh, you know, the, the, you know, actually um, our revenue will not come so much from the, uh, the fees paid because obviously at $9.99, it's not very much. Um, our, our aim is to get people going so that we can fund them uh, with advertising revenue. And then we'll make commission from the advertisers. And I want to point out that our model um, is to charge the advertisers. We don't charge the podcasters. So um, yeah, so that's the model. All right. So I, 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 I like this. All right. So, so I see, I didn't know that. Okay. So, so I want to, I want to, um, I really want to, um, okay. I could really have to absorb all this. Okay. So I go on start a pod and I go through everything great. And then I launch my podcast. Are right. Let's just, let, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, uh, sure. forgive me, Tom, I'll interrupt you about, by please, saying, please. let me just walk you through an ideal um, 
roadmap or, or path. Let's say that you, you sign up at start a pod and you go through as many lessons as you want. You can learn everything from uh, production, like how to do the editing of a spot to uh, distribution, like, you know, how, how does that work to publicity, to social media, to legal, to, to all that kind of stuff. And then we explain revenue, like we explain the cost per thousand model so you can understand it um, and all of that. So let's say you go through some of those uh, video lessons and we have about 70 video lessons. They're about an average of three minutes long. You don't have to go through them all, uh, you know, you go through whatever you want. And then you say, all right, I'm, I'm ready. I've got my idea. And then you, um, you click the resources tab. Uh, and I want to emphasize to your listeners that that's where um, a lot of the, the next steps happen, where if you go to the resources tab, you'll see um, the links to the hosting companies, for example, Simplecast. And, and if, you, if you go through that pathway, uh, then uh, they will send us your um, download numbers, and then we can start doing ad buys if we uh, feel that there's a, a match between an advertiser and, and the show. And um, moreover, uh, we have connections to uh, microphone uh, sellers and you know, uh, mixers and, and all the rest. So um, you can actually, through this resources tab, get to an anything you want. Additionally, um, we have a, a link in that resources tab to producers. And there are hundreds of uh, freelance producers that have signed up with us at Startup Hub and um, are available um, you know, for a, a small fee to guide you. So let's say that you want to do your own editing and, and all the rest, uh, but you, uh, you need some hand-holding. So you can uh, go to that producer's section and then click on there and then reach out to them and then they will um, guide you. And, um, or if let's say you just want to have them handle the uh, production completely, it, they'll do that too. So uh, there's a lot of options in that resources tab. I would encourage listeners uh, who use Startupod to go there. And then, okay, so a user service, I get launched. And, 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 and so do I, so do I pay automatically link into pod search or? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Got to, okay. So I'm on pod search now. At, at what point can I knock on your door, Dave? Hey, I'm getting some downloads. Um, I, I'm interested in, in getting into your advertising a lot. Man. Or, or do you reach out to us when it reaches it and say, Hey Tom, we're going to start selling some ads for you that are consistent with what you're looking for. So, so that's, so a, that's a great, that. yeah, that's a great question. Um, the answer is immediately. So as soon as you launch your show, um, the system will trigger us, uh, trigger our ad buyers that you are there. And uh, so, and in fact, we, we have a, a way to highlight uh, within our system because we work with thousands and thousands of podcasters, obviously. Um, but, you know, we will um, be highlighting uh, those who come through Startupod and uh, give them some special attention. So as soon as the show starts, we will be our ad buyers and our planning team will be aware of those shows. Love it. All right. So uh, for ob obvious reasons, um, we want people to check out Start a Pod, to use the Start a Podcast. Um, but I don't want, I, but here's what I don't want. If you have a podcast and you're listening to this, leave your ego at the door and go to Start a Pod because half of the crap that I didn't know I learned in five minutes when I'm going to start a pod and I grossly <laughs> overestimated or underestimated certain things. And I'm like, well, A, I wish I knew half the things that I knew already, but I also uh, knew, uh, learned a whole bunch of new stuff. So, so for those that are not like to start now, but those who have a podcast, leave your ego at the door and go to startupod.com. So Dave, how can we find you uh, if we're looking to get connected with you directly? Uh, right on LinkedIn, actually. Uh, just uh, go to Pod Search or, or or Dave Newmark on LinkedIn and uh, and reach out. Uh, that's that's uh, you know, I have uh, thousands of people who have done that, uh, and I I I look at it all the time. So uh, that's a good way uh, to get things going. But I, I'm glad that I want to go back for a second uh, to something you just said that's really important, and I'm glad you said it, which is that uh, we're welcoming people into start a pod who already have a podcast. It's not that you have to be starting one, even though it's called start a pod. Um, we do have a pathway uh, for those who um, already have a podcast to come in and then tag up with us for advertising. Love it. All right, Dave, thank you for being on the podcast. You're always welcome to come uh, on the show anytime. You're a friend of the show. I, I have, I can count on my left hand with 200 plus guests. I think you're the second or third that I've had on the second time. 
So, oh, wow. Uh, I appreciate that. Wow. Well, I'm, well, Tom, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. You ask great questions. And so it's, it's really, uh, it's fun for me. Love it. Uh, so check out startupod.com and uh, let them know new theory saying it. Thank you.